Well, good morning. Good to have you here, and you heard how all music is supposed to be played, with kind of a jazz rendition to it. Thank you, Kent. None of this country stuff. It's been creeping in all over the place. So, a couple of things wanted to lift up for you. Uh, Mary Caters, all the way in the back corner, raise your hand. Um, she will be out in the uh, lower atrium uh, after service this morning. Uh, the uh, Genesis Preschool is offering up uh, hanging flower baskets for sunshine and shade. Um, and so you can order those. They'll be here in time for you to decorate my house, I mean for Mother's Day. Um, and uh, so make sure you find your way down to that table as well. Uh, also wanted to highlight uh, that you have in, in the seating uh, these uh, little things for uh, personal care kits. You can imagine with millions upon millions of folks fleeing their home, they didn't all stop and say, wait a second, we forgot our toothbrush. So what uh, they're finding uh, across the globe right now as people are being displaced from multiple different countries is that uh, the need for personal care kits has just skyrocketed. So if you are able, this gives you the instructions of what's needed, how to prepare those. You can bring them here to the church and then we will get them uh, moved on uh, as promptly as we can. Are there joys or concerns that you would like lifted up this morning as uh, before we begin our worship? Okay, so Garrett turns 21 on Wednesday. All right, so then he gets a job and he pays you back for all the diapers and the food and all that kind of stuff. Oh, great, that's, that's a big mark. Uh, any others? Welcome to the bell choir who's uh, here this morning. They've already uh, warmed up and are ready for, uh, to lift up a uh, offering a little bit later in the service. So then as you are able, let us all stand and we will begin with our song of community. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness lord unto me great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And so we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of heaven and earth, now we have gathered as your people. Equip us by your spirit to confess our sin, to embrace forgiveness, to follow in the way of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us confess our sin. Merciful God, forgive us. Our will is handcuffed to sin, and we cannot break free. We have spoken when we should have kept quiet. We were silent when we should have spoken. We acted when we knew better, and we were still when we should have moved. For all these, have mercy on us. Send us to proclaim your grace through Jesus Christ. And so, people of God, open your eyes and your hearts. Through Jesus, we are forgiven and freed from our sin. Let us now give thanks and praise. Amen. Amen. And so, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward. You embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace. Feed us at the table of your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. So our first reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. St. Paul writes, From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and he has given us the ministry of reconciliation that is in God in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us so we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us 
we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my praise. All my hope comes from God. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my praise. God, the wellspring of life. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. While I kept silence, my body wasted away, though my groaning through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of the summer. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my praise. All my hope comes from God. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my praise. God, the wellspring of life. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not hide my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all who are faithful offer prayer to you. At a time of distress, the rush of mighty waters shall not reach them. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with glad cries of deliverance. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my praise. All my hope comes from you. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my praise. God, the wellspring of life. I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. I will console you with my eye upon you. Do not be like a horse or a mule without understanding, whose temper must be curbed with bit and bridle, else it not stay near you. Many are the torments of the wicked, but steadfast love surrounds those who trust in the Lord. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, O righteous, and shout for joy all you upright in heart. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my praise. All my hope comes from God. The Lord is my song, the Lord is my praise. God, the wellspring of life. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Lord. Now all the tithes collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property 
between them. And fifty days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in desolate living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his field to feed the pigs. He could gladly have filled himself with the pots that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's higher hands have had bread enough to spare. But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your higher hands. So he set off and went to his father, but while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly! Bring out a rope, the best one, and put it on him, and put a ring on his finger, and sandals on his feet, and get the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found, and they began to celebrate. Now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the son's house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the father calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and be began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all the years I have been working like a slave for you and have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me even a young goat so that I might set a brave with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who had devoured your property with prostitutes? You killed the father calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead. It has come to life. He was lost. It has been found the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I would like to talk today on a topic, the God of compassion. The God of compassion. This is a very familiar parable. We know in this particular chapter, book of Luke, Talk about the lost sheep, the lost coin, and now we're on the prodigal son. Let me dive right a little bit in. There's a picture or two up there. During our break time, we took the opportunity, just like Calvary is providing a space for people to gather and worship. So taking a break out of Calvary a little bit, we decided to visit St. Andrews. The first picture is that contemporary worship. 
service that they have at 9.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock on Saturday and 9.30 on Saturday morning. The next picture, there's another picture there for the sanctuary, and that they worship at 9 a.m. and also 10.30. It's quite a big, big space. But what's the point? The point that people are worshiping, providing a space. There are people still out there hungry for God. So no matter where you may come from, the space is there to worship. So for me, it was a motivation that, oh, there are other people out there still worshiping. We can continue to worship God the way we worship God. So that was a sad part about it. Thank you. Today's story, the prodigal son. I will focus on the father. And many have said, many have interpreted the parable of the father as God, the father being God. We know from the beginning of this story, it's difficult for someone to ask for the inheritance. In certain culture, you ask for inheritance, it means you want the father dead. Sometimes inheritance are not given until the person has passed away. But in this situation, the younger son is not asking for his inheritance. Asking for his estate. So some have interpreted this to say, well, he's asking for his father to be dead. But here's the case. The father being a general father, also knowing his son, he allowed his son to experience life. Perhaps if he had said, Lord, I'm not going to give you, that could have led into argument and all of things. So what did he do? He said, since you asked for inheritance, I am going to grant you it. So time went by, he was granted his inheritance. And I think part of the culture is that the senior brother get two thirds, and he's supposed to get one third. But however the case may be, he got what he asked for. As parents, it's sometimes difficult to see a younger child going out. We experienced that when we had to allow our big daughter. She wanted to go out and be by herself. So yeah, go. You have our blessing. But the doors are always open. You can come back any time. So in this case, the son took his inheritance and went out to a far or distant country. Well, it's easy to spend, but you don't work for it. What did he do? Perhaps he didn't have a right skill. He lavished his inheritance. He spread it out. He did all kinds of living with it. Not thinking about long term. He was thinking about a short term. And then what happened? And that long, far away distance, for some, I interpreted that to be far from God or separated from God. But here's the case. He came to his senses after he realized that everything he has gone. He went out to be hired by a citizen of that country. When he hired him, what did he do? He was going to go feed a pig and started eating the pig food. What happened there? after he had done that? He came to his senses. Well, he said, well, the slave in my father's house eat better than what I'm eating here. So he had to stop and confess, and repent, and came to his cell. He said, I'm going to confess that I've sinned against heaven, and I've sinned against my father. I'm going back to bleed. I'm going back to my father. He did not allow shame to keep me down, but he repented. He said, I'm going home. 
a father or parents always most of the time have that home available when something goes wrong they have that house available for a child to return and it tells us that when he came to his servant came by home the father saw him from afar he came from afar and recognized him because he was waiting for a moment to embrace Perhaps he been praying, maybe praying for his son to come by home. It's not easy to wait. It takes time. Just like parents sometimes want to send their kids to college or to leave the house. I can't wait to be 18 or 20 or 21. Even when that child leaves the house, they still have that at the back of their mind that a child is out there. Maybe the child will come home one day. Or maybe something is happening to that child. Oh, no, but the point here, when the child got home, the father saw the child from out. It's could have been all the way around. He went to embrace his son. He told the slave, go and get the best clothes, the best sandal. Kill, let's celebrate. Because this son of mine was lost. But now, he has come back home. He was dead, but now he has come to life. Let's celebrate. And part of our story here is that God also sees us when we are gone far away. Sometimes far away from our mind. Sometimes far away when things may not be going right. Sometimes even when we do things like mess up in a slow way. God still has his arm open to us to welcome us. Sometimes even the person can be the worst of slaves in the world. God still have the hands of compassion for that person to come in because our God is a God of love. He's a God of compassion. He's a God of a second chance. He gave his son a second chance. Even the son has disrupted the son had all everything. He ruled everything. He had no other place there, but yet the father still had a place, still had a room for his son. When the other son saw that the celebration was going on, as you can see the picture, that's the time you're leaving, and maybe we can go to the next picture. He was able to stop. That sign is very important. Sometimes we see that sign in a lot of different places, especially driving. Okay, if you learn not to stop, things do happen. His son learned to stop in his mind. He took action. Stop is a strong word. We can overlook the sign. Sometimes we know driving, we, if we don't see the sign, we just go. But the reality is that in life, we sometimes get to a point where we need to stop, recalculate. Have you heard that word before, right? GPS? Going somewhere, recalculate. For the son, he had to recalculate. He had to be resolved. He had to rethink what else can I do but to run back home. The green light is important. When it's time to go, it's time to go. For the son, it was time to go by home. And for the father, it was time to embrace. So the father embraced the son. And they all rejoiced. When the other son came, he said, man, I've been here all the time working for you like no one business. I've been loyal to you. I've been doing what, I've asked, what you asked me to do. But you have now one day, one day, killed a goat for me. For this son of yours who ruined everything and you celebrated. What well, he responded from the father was that you have always been here with me. What I have is yours. How will we see that? We see God as a God showing love to his children. It was not up to the sons. It was up to God what God wanted to do. And that's what he did. Sometimes we may feel that it's up to us. No. It's up to the God who created us to decide 
what he wants to do. Sometimes it's not about us moving forward. It's about our waiting on God, for God to make the decision, for God to go on the stream, just to show that compassion. That's the far kind of father that we want in this world. A God that will say, I will give you, continue to give you a second chance. The God that will say, I will continue to love you no matter how far you may have gone. No matter how close you may have come or how far you may have gone. The house is still there. Home is where we all belong. And home is where you can run into. And home is where when compassion or things may not go right, you say, I am going to. It's not about judgment. It's about how God sees and how God cares and how God loves you. There are people in this world that stay having impact. Right now, we know due to the Ukraine war, America is having great impact in so many ways. Helping to feed the people, helping to pray. Poland and other countries trying to take other refugees in giving a second chance. Our God is a God of power, and our God is a God of affection. Our God is a God of love. As we reflect on this story, and we look on the picture there, see how terrible, how sorrowful, that God may have been naked in his mind, not clothing. But the Father learned to forgive. The Father learned to have that compassion Learn to have mercy and grace for him out. Grace from the father's heart went towards his son and they were rejoicing. So the point here, no matter how we may be, our God is a God of compassion. He's a God of love. He cares about you and myself. He also cares about even those that we don't recognize. As the worst sinner in the world, God is still there. For scripture say, but they that in Christ have become new. For the old has gone, and the new has come. That's from 2 Corinthians 5, something, paraphrasing there. He became new, but blood is thicker than water. The father knew that was his son in the heart. And the son came back. He accepted the son. He could have prosecuted his son right there. Make him shame. Go away. You don't belong. You're not welcome. You foolish boy. You're not smart. He could have said all kinds of names. He didn't do that. I wonder what could be our reaction. But our father know all that we need. Say, I stay here for you. I watched a short movie. It's an African movie. Of parents gave a car to the daughter. And the daughter was driving and hit someone. Instead of stop, instead of taking that person to the hospital, she didn't do it. They felt that no one was seeing them or seeing her, so she left and went home. A passerby took that child, took the child to the hospital, and the end was that they recovered. So the person that saw them reported to the police. So they twist them and went to the home. The girl that hit the, the person to the home, and they reported the situation. But this girl was from the street. Very poor girl. And then when the police show up, and a representative of this girl show up, and the person house they went to was a really worthy person. So they asked, what is it that this girl really need? The representative of the police told them that it's to give this girl a second chance to live. She lives in the street. If you can provide her a home and clean her up, she would be a better person. So the agreement was that instead of her daughter to go to jail, they agreed for that slip of that street person to be in a house 
and she stayed there and served them, and she was cleaned up, and she even went to a school and became a medical doctor, a second chance. And because the girl was in the home, her other daughter was, she, did, she couldn't do anything at all because she was of a privilege. She couldn't do anything much. But the other girl that came in was able to provide more space for her. And that challenged her, and she became a better person. So second chance from God, the God of love, God of Asha. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of God's spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's go to the next one. As you are able, let us all stand as we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, greater of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. As we are drawing close with God, now let us offer our prayers for the church, for the world, for all who are in need. Jesus, you formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Now lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebration. Send us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnation. God of grace, hear our prayer. And you make the land to produce a harvest that sustains your creation. May you equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. 
May you work to heal the grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. God of grace. Countries are divided. Leaders often harbor grudges. May you work and touch our hearts to reconcile nations that are experiencing conflict. Especially this day, we lift up Russia and Ukraine. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers and foster a spirit of collaboration and healing among rivals. God of grace. And your people cry for help in times of distress. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving. Move us to reach out to those who are in trouble, who are hungry, who are without a home. And console us with the promise that all can become new. God of grace, hear our prayer. And your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is prepared. Bless the feeding ministries of this community. Lead us to bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. And so now we give you thanks for those who have lived and have now died in faith. Shelter now their families in your love until we are gathered at our heavenly banquet. O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, we lift these prayers to you for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so may the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you now to greet those around you as you are most comfortable with our Lord's peace. As you're seated, draw your attention to our mission moment today of how we do God's work with your hands. much like you bring forth these offerings as well. And so let us stand. And so we pray. Holy Shepherd, you spread a table in the valley of the shadow of death, and the cup of blessing overflows. As we have gathered at this table, now remind us of your abundant presence that we may not fear, but receive the loving comfort that you provide. Amen. And so now may the Lord be with you. And may you lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, the universe declares your praise beyond the stars, beneath the sea, within each cell, and with every breath. For it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places offer our thanks and praise. And so now we give you thanks for your dear Son who is near to those who suffer, who is beside the sinner, who is among the poor, and who is with us now. And we pray for your gift of your Spirit in this gathering, within this meal we are about to partake, and among your people throughout the world. And so we join with them and those of all times and places in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Now in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, now take and eat. This is my body, it is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you, it's shed for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so as we remember, let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Congregation may be seated as you receive now the bread. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. And again with the cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. And so let us pray. Now we give you thanks, O God, for you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. May it strengthen us in faith toward you and in love towards one another for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Now go forward this day knowing that you are given a chance, a chance to reach out, to offer grace and forgiveness to another, to serve as you have been served, to love as you've been loved. May you go forward in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let us sing. Let us go now in peace as we serve the Lord, for Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.